Hi guys, good to see you here today. Today is just going to be a quick little video. It was actually part of the live stream I did last night. Uh, and it, it, was a, it was a small little section of, of the live stream which I thought would crop down quite nicely for a, for a video by itself. And it may even lead on to a, a small series I do as I look at past images and how they were put together. So you can almost class this as episode one of Deconstruct. So what's coming up is a, a quick deconstruction of an image which I posted recently. And I'm going to take you through the various layers, how they were built, and all the various odds and sods and small small adjustments to large adjustments, and how it all came together to produce the final result. So I hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment if you do. Leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't been here before, please do consider subscribing. It'll be uh, great to have you along every single week. All right, so here's the content. So yeah, this is the image that I posted, I think maybe it was over the weekend. It was certainly part of the vlog that I posted yesterday. It's a fairly distinctive shot, quite bright, quite vibrant, and I'm really looking forward to printing it. I think I'd be quite pleased to have it on my wall. I think I might even, I might treat myself to a frame Print one, out, print one out for myself and get it up there. So I started off with three layers which applied some colour adjustments in Lightroom before I brought them into Photoshop as layers. And each of these layers, you can see the top ones, had a, a, mask, a mask applied to it. And that's really just to get rid of edges because this top one had to be realigned in position. To, uh, to match the, the outline. So I've got everything lined up, masked out the hard edges that pr were pretty much across here and down the side. It threw it all into Analog Effects Pro, uh, ran one of my usual presets over it, gave it a bit of a tweak to the point where I like, you know, quite liked what was coming out. So which brought me back out of this. Obviously with Analog Effects Pro, you can't deconstruct you know, all it does is spit out one, you know, one finished rendered layer. So you can't then go back in and show you what adjustments I did do. Uh, so that was that one. So the next, what I actually did, I actually threw it straight, threw it back into Analog Effects Pro to run it a second time uh, to see what it would do. And with this one, I then blended. It would have come out as such. So that's basically what I what what came out. But what I did do, I applied a multiply blend mode, and then I reduced the opacity. I think it was to forty percent, which brought me to this stage a hue and saturation adjustment, just to kind of warm up those yellows, give them more of an orange, an orangey cast. Um, if you know my work, you know for a fact that. Orange and reds and yellows dominate my work. I just wanted to warm it up because it was yellows can start looking quite greeny. A levels adjustment just to brighten it every brighten everything up, which brought us to this stage. And then I threw it back into Analog Effects Pro, uh, which brought me this image out, which I liked enough. But I wasn't totally happy with it. You know, it's one of them ones that you make and you're like, yeah, well, okay. But you know, for a fact, there's probably another image there if you work on it hard enough. So, as I usually do with these things, you know, layer upon layer, and you try different blend modes to see how it affects it. Um, and I went all the way back down to the bottom to the difference blend mode, which I'm not really sure how it works or why it does this. I just know sometimes it works. Sometimes it works nicely and sometimes it doesn't. This time, when I saw it like this, and I thought, hold on, this can do something. I can have a bit of fun here. But I did reduce the opacity a touch just so it wasn't too dark. Uh, and then I applied a curves layer just to brighten it up again. Simple RGB curve, just Brought the, lightened it significantly, 
and reduced the uh, the blacks yeah in the corner you can see and then I threw it into Viveza just to work on the color again as you can see between the two again that's quite a greeny kind of yellow which I was trying to get rid of so put it into Viveza which obviously is part of the Nick, Nick collection did some did the color adjustments just warmed it up of touch really and actually must have put it into Viveza again and I think this time I must have worked on contrast and brightness and you know tech ex texture extraction things like that to get to the to this stage and then the final layer is just hue, hue and saturation and it's just adjusting those yellows again I think it was yellows yeah just a small adjustments on the yellows just to warm them up a touch and that's pretty much how how this image came around just scroll these back so just mixing blend modes mixing opacity uh, a few throwing in curve adjustment layers level layers uh, just getting to the point where and you're just building the image up probably almost as if you would have if you were paint, you know doing a painting you'd have the base layer and then Add a bit more on the top, and then a bit more on the top, and more on the top, and keep on building. So there's quite a significant amount of work and, and lots of time spent doing these doing these things. So hopefully that's kind of giving you a bit of an insight on how that image came across. If you were interested in when you saw it online, well, that was an interesting one to show you. Just shows you the extent, and it was, you know the the main selling point of this image was that use of the of the difference blend mode which just happened to work this time lots of times it just it, it doesn't i think it all depends on it all it all obviously all depends on pixel interaction but it it worked in this stage in the, in this case rarely rarely does it work but it did in this in this case i'm very glad it did I hope you enjoyed that look behind the image and a bit of a view almost behind the scenes of the image. So I hope that was helpful and eye-opening hopefully. If you've enjoyed that please leave a comment below, let us know what you thought. Should I carry on with this series and do this and this type of analysis for other images that I've made? It'd be great to have your feedback on it. But until next time, the next time I'll see you will probably be Tuesday night edits 7.30 UK time where you can actually watch me make these images from scratch, or at least from the, the initial data. So until then, catch you later. Bye.